They rank ninth in the NCAA, 52% good shooting club. The series record, well, 38 to a 21 in favor of the Louisville Cardinals. But of course, of late, 23 out of the last 27, including six in a row. Cedric Lover, Purvis Ellison, one of the key matchups to look forward to tonight. And that's the sophomore, LeBradford Smith. Keith Williams will run the show out front for the men of Denny Crum. LeBradford Smith. Out on the wing it goes to Tony Kimbrough. And now Ellison High. And he opens up in a man-to-man -man defense. I thought they might zone a little tonight, but they're going man-to-man. -man. Kenny Payne. Kenny Payne, who comes off of a subpar performance against Florida State, in which he scored only 10, knocks in the 17-footer, and now backcourt pressure being employed by Louisville. Elnardo Gibbons tries to beat the count and does. To Starks, to Tate, to the land of the Giants. Glover picks it up and puts it in. Cincinnati fortunate to come up with that one. Louisville gets it right out of the net and starts to break up the right side. So Payne for Louisville, Glover for Cincinnati. A three-point attempt way off the mark by Kimbrough, and it's out of bounds to Cincinnati. Marty, I got to tell you, it's just being a basketball fan, it's nice to see Purvis Ellison back in the lineup. I know he was out with two games of that injury. He did not start the last game, came off of the bench, scored 19 points. Six rebounds to go with those 19 points in the upset loss to Florida State at Freedom Hall on Monday night. The pressure, does it force a turnover? It does. Bad move that time by Lewis Banks. He should have picked that basketball up instead of, instead of letting it go out of bounds. I think he thought a Louisville guy must have hit it. Denny Crum almost always calm and tranquil on the Louisville bench. Only for the first couple of minutes. Yeah. Cardinals on the attack. Kimbrough at the top of the circle. Being checked by Keith Starks. And now it's LeBradford Smith against Andre Tate. Baseline drive. The shot fails to go. But Starks will put him on the free throw line. Marty Louisville did a nice job. The double screen that time. And there was no opening. So LeBradford Smith kicked the ball long. A skip pass right into the hands of Kimbrough. And you see Starks with a foul right there. Diddy Crum was uh, somewhat critical of Tony Kimbrough's play this past weekend, this past Monday against Florida State. Looks like he's come out here ready to play today. He wasn't real happy with Kenny Payne. We talked to him at the U uh, L practice here yesterday about the fact that Payne only got up eight shots after scoring a career-high 28 in the previous game against Memphis State. He said, well, the main reason why he got up only eight shots is because he spent a whole lot of time on the bench. A little tough to come into Cincinnati and play a basketball game the way they played here this year. They lost three games. Two of them by one and one by five, so they've been pretty tough at home. Louisville takes a 3-2 lead as Kimbrough hits one of two. Givens to Tate over the timeline, and there's the pressure. And it's Ellison cutting in front for the steal, and the ball tipped. And right back the other way, rope out of bounds, and who will get the basketball? It'll be Louisville ball. I tell you, you made a great play that time defensively on both ends was Ellison with the steal at midcourt, and then by Gibbons on the other end to slap the ball away by Ellison trying to make the pass to the right side. Now the Louisville trapping defense has already forced two Cincinnati turnovers for Bradford Smith from downtown on air ball. Lewis Banks with a kick out to Elmardo Gibbons, and the Bearcats want to run. Starts with a turnaround. Bingo. Here comes Cincinnati with their press. They're man-to-man. -man. No zone for them. Bearcats four, Cardinals three. Quickly up the floor come Louisville. Here's Keith Williams to the land of the Giants. He throws up a prayer unanswered, and Starks rakes it off the glass. Cincinnati wants to play a little transition. It's Banks at the other end. And rebounding the long miss shot. Keith, Kenny Payne, and now off to Keith Williams. Looks like Louisville's going to accommodate him with the same kind of game. That's Kimbrough, and that's for three. Louisville six, Cincinnati four with 17.30 remaining in the first half. Banks has the ball batted around and fouled on the play. And a, a look of pain on the face of one Kenny Payne. He didn't agree with the call, but the foul nevertheless. Mike Jag making the call. Watch Banks. Watch him look in there. He's looking for that opening. He's got Kimbrough and Payne pretty well dissected right there, but he couldn't get through because it got grabbed. I'm not sure he got the right guy. I think maybe Kimbrough was the guy that did it. Andre Tate will act as a trigger man. Kenny Payne with a foul for Louisville. And one against Cincinnati's Keith Starks. The inbound pass deep to Elmardo Gibbons. This young man has played extremely well of late for Coach Tony H. And running the Cincinnati offense. Lewis Banks to Keith Starks. Well, we he draws really attention. The outside. And there's a rejection by Ellison. A block shot for the 58th game in the last 59 that he has played. 
watch it again. Purvis Ellison. Can he block shots? You better believe it. He can do just about anything. Watch him. He kept the ball, and it bounced right off. Looks like he might have gotten hit in the nose. Ellison walking over to the University of Louisville bench to either have his nose or a lip looked after. Marty White is going to say his Purvis has got 58 now, 59 blocks, and the whole Cincinnati team only has 46. Watch it again. Now, here he comes down with the ball. Now, watch the slap. Apparently, he's all right. He might have gotten hit in the tooth or maybe yeah. under the lip. Back in the middle of that defense, Ellison and LeBradford Smith. He tried to out-sky Eldardo Gibbons, and that's number one on the sophomore for Bay City, Texas. As I said to you in the opening of this uh, game, I really am going to look for one thing, a very key point of this game, is how LeBradford Smith and Andre Tate perform early on. Right now, neither one of them doing very much because the ball's gone inside so much. And pretty good shoot by Kimbrough from the outside. The ball in the hands of Gibbons with Cincinnati trailing Louisville 6-4. to four, Just over 17 minutes remaining in the first half. Gibbons against the much taller Ellison with a kick back to Banks. On the drive, put it up, too strong. And it's saved at the end line by Starks. Good effort. He can't get it to go down. And he gets it back. And this is again. So the third time was anything but a charm for Starks. But last touch by a Louisville player. Marty, Cincinnati has out-rebounded its opponents for 14 straight games before this last game against Florida State. You're going to see some of this work right here. What Starks go back in. They get second and third extra points. That's what I, in fact, they've got a term for it here in Cincinnati that I, I kind of like. They call it extra effort points. They go back, get turnovers or second chance points on rebound. Cedric Glover with his second field goal, and that enables the Bearcats to tie the Cardinals at six. Go, 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 go. Just not changing that defense. They're staying with it man to man. I tell you, as the ball is knocked loose, picked back up by Williams and cross court to LeBranford Smith. Cedric Glover was complaining to the official that he was being muscled pretty well by Purvis Ellison, but uh, no whistle. Smith for three. And Look at Ellison. Great position. Oh, did he ever wheel. What a great move. He just spun and kept Glover on his hip and wouldn't let him in there. I'll tell you, if he's not 100%, whatever the difference is, is not going to make any difference. Eight to six as he scores for the first time tonight. Cincinnati trying to answer at their end. Good action. Both these clubs look like they're hepped up, ready to play tonight. Very active. Andre Tate to start. Glover working hard down low to get free of Purvis Ellison, and that's not the easiest task in the world. You know, you got to worry, even when you get your hands on the ball in the right position, you know he's around somewhere. Here's Banks looking for a screen, and off the ball, a foul against Ellison. That is a reminder of the contact that was going on at the other end just a moment ago. How about the tease tonight? We talked to you about Ellison and Glover, the inside post play. Watch them go at each other. Great friends off the court, but competitors to the nth degree on. Timeout on the floor with 15.38 to go in the first half. A good start. Louisville 8, Cincinnati 6, and we'll be right back. Clydesdales, the symbol of Budweiser quality, of beechwood aging, the choicest natural ingredients, and a genuine commitment to freshness and taste. One beer lives up to all this. Budweiser. You're looking sharp. You're looking good. You've come so far. And we know how the most of who you are, father to son, it's what we've always done, Gillette. The, the Gillette Atra Plus system with the Luber Smooth Strip Gillette. for the best a man can get. The best a man can get. Dad? Mm-hmm? I've got a big problem. Yeah? It's really embarrassing. What is it, Jesse? I just can't wear those goofy pajamas with the door in the back anymore. I know. Mom's getting you some new grown-up ones. Good. Jesse? Mm-hmm? Ever had a Big Mac before? Not yet. Think you're ready? Sure am. It's a good time. Let's go get one. For the greatest of McDonald's. Gee, Dad, grown-up pajamas and a Big Mac all the same day. With 
Larry Conley, Marty Brenneman back at the Cincinnati Gardens. We are just underway. That is your score. And, Larry, we talk about the greatness of one Purvis Ellison. And right now the rebounding is led by Cincinnati 7-2. But I want you to watch one of the two that Louisville has. Watch this excellent offensive move. This is the way you get in position for offensive rebounding. Turn, hook the guy away, don't let him inside, and let the ball come off in your hands and take it right back up and lay it in. And if you're Purvis Ellison, that looks awfully easy. Ellison gave a pretty good rebounder in his own right. Cedric Lover, a real lesson to remember by right there and now Cincinnati tries to take the lead on the three-point attempt by Andre Tate the ball knocked away and Lewis Banks I'll tell you that was no more than a touch foul or that's all it appeared to be and Banks was not happy as he picks up his first and team foul number two watch it again there's Ellison right there he came off with a rebound in fact, came off with a good rebound. He had to go over the top of someone to get it without making body contact. Well, Cincinnati saying, if you can apply backward pressure, so can we. And it pays off for the Bearcats. Indeed, the five-second count got him. That is the first Louisville turnover. And Cincinnati will now try to parlay that into something good. It goes deep to Gibbons. He's looking low to Glover, and the big guy has it. One head fake, and it's on the way. Good. Tough shot, Ellison in his face. He still got it to go down. Three field goals, six points. The third tie in the game. They're even at eight. And now Glover gets a whistle off the basketball. They got Ellison a moment ago, and now they get Glover. Marty, they're sending a message. The guys on the striped shirts are saying, back off the post play. You guys are making it too rough. Adjust to us. Don't cause us problems in here. We told you not to push. Don't shove. Don't hack. Let's see if they get the message. Kenny Payne hands it off to Keith Williams. He's being stalked by Elnardo Gibbons and almost threw it away. Well, Tate is all over Smith. They got a long jam inside. Ellison looking low. Can't get it downstairs. But he plays to Payne on the run. Foul on the play, and he'll be on the line. Kenny Payne took it right to the teeth of that... Cincinnati defense, and as he went airborne for the jump shot, he was fouled on the play. I cannot tell you how aggressive Cincinnati looks on defense tonight. They are really getting after the Cardinals. Good man-to-man -man pressure. You saw the foul right there. Kenny Payne's going to walk to the line and shoot two shots. But i got to give Cincinnati credit. In the early going here, they look very sharp, very quick. One thing that bears watching now as a result of that play, Lewis Banks has picked up his second foul, and that's a young man who has averaged 20 points a game over the last four games for Cincinnati. They can ill afford to lose him early to any kind of foul trouble. Payne a good free throw shooter, as the numbers would indicate, and that time he got the bounce. Marty Kenny Payne had 28 points against Memphis State the other night, and he had 20 in the first half. He was absolutely scalding them in Memphis. Uh, Kenny Crump was saying yesterday that was a game that really got him into trouble. They went down and took Memphis State apart, and for the first half, they went through the motions against Florida State. He said, we played extremely well in the second half, but not so in the first 20 minutes of play. A little passive pressure that time by Louisville, and Cincinnati handled it. Cardinals lead 10-8. Banks is open, and they find it. A breakdown of the Cardinal defense, and Lewis Banks gets his first field goal. A turnover at the other end as LeBradford Smith overruns the dribble, and now Gibbons has it batted away by Tony Kimbrough. Williams on the drive, pull up. The loose ball run down by Banks at the end line. It's like watching a tennis match on the sideline. Yes, sir. Up and down the floor, both of these teams are going. Gibbons looking to Glover low, nothing there. Allison on him like a guy blanket. Here's Andre Tate. Gibbons gets a screen from Starks, and now it's Glover trying to weave his magic. The Cincinnati shows pretty good patience right here, and Louisville playing good defense. The jumper's long by Gibbons. The rebound picked off by Keith Williams. Good job by Louisville to keep the ball out of the middle that time. They didn't allow any passes to come in there. Kenny Payne out of the right, right pocket. Picked off by Gibbons. He leads it up to Tate to the basket and in. Andre Tate, who had all 17 of his points on Saturday against Florida State in the second half. Ellison with a kick back, and the three shot is up and no good by LeBradford Smith. 
So Cincinnati with a 12 to 10 lead and in possession. Really pushing the ball up the floor. Rebounded there by Kenny Payne and he'll put it in the capable hands of sophomore L.A. Smith. Ellison thought about the 15-footer. Instead to Williams for the turnaround. How about the post up by Keith Williams down inside? He took Givens. You're looking at 6-3 versus 5-11 and he got him the ball. The big guy got him the ball. That's who? Curtis Ellison. 12 Cincinnati. Likewise Louisville. 12-45 remaining in the first half. Tate drives at baseline. Yes. Two nice drives in a row by Andre Tate. One baseline, one on the right side. Louisville right back with the basketball. And Cincinnati right back with a two-point lead. A three-point attempt on the way. Too long. And since a Louisville, rather, who has been so prolific from three-point land this season, not getting off to a very good start at all tonight. They really have cooled off. Lever bending low. Shoot it up over Ellison. Cedric Lover with four field goals and eight points. 16 to 12, the Bearcats. A little bit of everything. Got the ball, and he's taking it right out of Ellison. He's made two very difficult shots right with Ellison right on top of it. Keith Williams checks out the lay of the land. Down to Kenny Payne. And the looping pass goes inside Ellison. He will do it, and almost threw up an air ball. Elvardo Gibbons comes up with his second rebound. Oh, good pass. And there is Banks. And blocking foul against the Louisville Cardinals, L.A. Smith. What a great delivery of the pass by Elnardo Gibbons to Lewis Banks. Sit back in your easy chair and watch this one. This is the way you run the fast break. You put it on the board like this. Look at that great pass. Excellent run. Excellent run. You gotta learn to finish it off, Lewis. Concentrate. Finish it off and get that basket. That's the way you gotta run the break. Banks will go to the line for two and substitutions now for Cincinnati. A local product, Jeff Flynn, out of Oak Hills High School here in Cincinnati has come on for the Bearcats. One of the fine freshmen for the Louisville Cardinals, Everick Sullivan. Out of Simpsonville, South Carolina, along with Junior Felton Spencer. I'm going to tell you, Denny Crum is giving a lecture to both Kenny Payne and Tony Kimbrough right now. Kimbrough just sat down. He got his ears full. Payne's still getting his. <laughs> well put, my man. Well put. Bank shooting for his fourth point. Rebounded inside by Louisville, and Everett Sullivan touches briefly, and now it's Keith Williams. 17 to 12, Cincinnati. That's the biggest lead enjoyed by either club, but a whole lot of time remaining here in the first half, 11 3 0. Spin move by LeBradford Smith, and a reach in foul by Andre Tate. That's his first. I'll tell you what, I am really impressed with the aggressiveness of this Cincinnati defense. They've really caused Louisville a lot of problems. Cardinals not shooting the ball nearly as well as they have the last couple of games. Time out of the action, 11.28 remaining. Cincinnati in front by five. Don't go away. We'll be right back. You hear the thunder, thunder. You can see it in the way it looks. You can feel it in the way it drives. This is America's premier sports coup, Grand Prix. It's a great time to check out Grand Prix with GMAC financing as low as 4.9% or up to $1,600 cash back on select Grand Prix for qualified first-time buyers. See your dealer for details today. This memory is brought to you by Unicam. Since 1951, we've fueled more NASCAR winners than all of the gasolines combined. And we put that same high performance and winning spirit in the gasolines for your car. What'd you say we take her for a spin, Murph? Rich. Otis, contemptible. I'm speaking of offending in the personal grooming arena. When seeking maximum protection and a fresh scent, one should grab Ray Guard Sports Stick from Gillette. Antipressment and deodorant. Anything less would be uncivilized. We want to inform our viewers that this telecast is a copyrighted presentation of Raycom Sports and Entertainment, and any rebroadcast, retransmission, or use of the audio or video portion of this program without the written permission of Raycom Sports and Entertainment is forbidden. Well, Cincinnati has started to heat up a little bit, Larry. 
Indeed they have. They're shooting 50%, 8 of 16. Louisville is 4 of 13 for 31%. Cincinnati's number one in the Metro in defense field goal percentage. And right now they're doing an excellent job of that, shutting Louisville down. As I said, Louisville shot the ball very well against Virginia Tech at 54%, Memphis State 65, but only 43% against Florida State. Louisville trying to get it back. Pass, bad pass inside by Everett Sullivan and deflected by senior veteran Jeff Lynn. Here's Lavernus Robinson, and he's fouled, or was he? No whistle. No whistle. No whistle, and Tony Yates has all been out of shape as Sullivan misses at the other end. The rebound by Felton Spencer, and now a foul will be called against Cincinnati, and Tony Yates, look at it. Well, I will tell you this. If Purvis Ellison avoided a foul on that particular play, he's Superman. Because Lavertus Robinson went baseline. Look at this strong move. That had to be a foul, Marty. Absolutely. Had to be Absolutely. a foul. He had to hold on to the rim to keep from coming down and, and uh, getting hurt. Tony Yates has every single reason in the world to be as irate as he appears on your television screen. Felton Spencer was fouled by Jeff Flynn. He'll have one more coming. I gotta say this, you and I do not referee very much. No, On we these don't. telecasts, we really don't, but that one was too obvious. Like I said, these guys are right 99% of the time, but that one got away. 17-13, Cincinnati's lead cut to four, just under 11 minutes remaining in half number one. Robinson feeds it up ahead to Keith Stark, shooting over Spencer. And the big guy clears out the rebound and the quick kick out to James Boo Brewer. Big lineup in there for Louisville now. Felton Spencer at seven feet, Purvis Ellison at six ten. Ellison taking advantage of the mismatch. He starts was playing him, and he missed the jump shot. Jeff Lynn, Elnardo Gibbons, Lavertus Robinson. Here's Starks running it down at the top of the key from 17. Bingo. Ice water in his veins. Turned around and just shot him. Florida State kind of like this, didn't they? Yes, they transition. Did. Set them down pretty good. Hey, they're at their best playing this kind of basketball. When they try to slow it up and work the clock, oftentimes they can get into trouble. Felton Spencer with his first field goal. 19 to 15, Louisville trailing Cincinnati. And the Bearcats methodically trying to work that ball out of the backcourt. There starts. Ellison stalking him. And now they strip him of the basketball. Brewer picks it up. The freshman from Bardstown nice to the pass. cutting Ellison. Nice no, oh, he, he didn't get the roll. Andre Tate, 18th footer. Foul on Keith Williams. That's five team fouls on Louisville. Cincinnati has been whistled also for five. And now one of the great jumpers in this game, freshman Cornelius Holden. Out of Los Angeles, Crenshaw High School comes on for Denny Crumb's ball club, and Keith Williams will sit out. That's an interesting lineup. Yeah, Ellison goes out of the lineup. I thought I didn't know who was going to go out for Louisville, but uh, very young lineup in there right now. Want to give that young man a plug. Paige Moyer with a yellow necktie on. His dad, Charles, a former fine basketball coach at Virginia Tech. We understand that Charlie is watching tonight from Roanoke, and we promise Paige a little bit of air time. And he deserves it. He's a great kid. Cincinnati already with 16 fouls. Louisville with five. Second shot by Tate. Got it. Here comes the pressure by Cincinnati. They got a steal. Loose ball picked up by Jeff Lynn. What an effort by Gibbons. Cincinnati by six, 21-15. The Bearcats playing well. Here's Robinson, one dribble and airborne. Somebody got a hand on that one. Holden got it. Picked off by Spencer underneath. Louisville looks like they turned it up a notch. They're moving a little bit quicker than they were earlier. Brewer goes baseline, offensive foul. Say enough good things in this first half about the play at Leonardo Gibbons. Not only is he doing it offensively, controlling the basketball, but watch this defensive work he gets gets credit for. Look at this position. He got the guard right there. It was an excellent play. And he get those feet planted, he did. Benny Crump settling back down. Gibbons. Pass up ahead it goes to Andre Tate. Driving, shooting, foul, called. Offensive foul. And Tony Yates. 
like a jack-in-the-box, spring it off that Cincinnati bench one more time. A pair of back-to-back -back offensive charges right there. Watch it again. Andre Tate taking the basketball, trying to go into heavy traffic. That's a pretty good call. I think yep. maybe Spencer got there. Everick Sullivan controls the basketball for Louisville. 21-15, the Cardinals trail the Cincinnati Bearcats. Kenny Payne, here's a turnaround by Holden. Basket counts, plus a foul on Jeff Flynn. What is it that makes a defensive player want to raise his hand from the up position all the way down and want to hit that guy on the arm? Just keep your hand straight up in his face. Now watch this. Watch him bring it down. See? Got him right on the arm. Jeff Flynn. So Holden, 6'7", 195 pounds, a young man who came out of that high school in Los Angeles, Crenshaw, that has produced the likes of Marcus Johnson and John Williams, Stevie Thompson, who plays so well at Syracuse, Stanley Brundy at DePaul, and a fellow by the name of Daryl Strawberry. He hits a few, doesn't he? Yeah, I would say. 21-18, Louisville creeps back to within three. Andre Tate, pressured, needs help, finds it in Gibbons. The Louisville defense reacts very, very well. Very, very well. Gibbons with a quick move in there, and they had three players, three Louisville players react. Two players go down inside, Glover and Spencer. The ball goes to Glover, Spencer. tipped away by Spencer, lead pass to Sullivan, and stolen right Gibbons. back by Gibbons. What a frenetic oh, what a pass this game has taken on. And a blocking foul called against Louisville. Boy, did you pay. see that between the legs bounce pass? What's this? This is great. What's Givens with a steal? I said he was playing a great first half. That's incredible. Little Marcus Haynes slide across the floor. Pick it up. Go the other way. Watch his bounce right there. Oh, good bounce pass. Just leave it for the guy coming behind you. That's two fouls on Kenny Payne, and it's one and one time now for Cincinnati. They'll be in it for the final 8-0-1 of the first half, and boy, this place is buzzing at the pace these two clubs are going at each other at. Nice to see Lavertus Robinson back playing again, too, Marty. He has been out because of suffering dizzy spells a couple of weeks ago, was hospitalized for five days, and seeing his first bit of playing time tonight. Out of Martin Luther King High School in Chicago, his first point averaging almost 10 points a game. And this young man will play above the iron more often than not. Some great upper body strength. Yes, sir. Does have some wheels to get him up there. Rebounded by Brewer, lost it, picked up by Sullivan, and picked up by Robinson. To the lane, shooting, scoring, Everett Sullivan. And Mark him down as one of your 15 or 20 best freshmen in the country, too. He's a player. 22-20, Louisville has come back to cut it to a deuce. Say, it's that young man right there that's leading this club right now, Leonardo Gillen. He's handling that press, coming up with big steals, taking charges. Dropping off good passes, doing it all. Gibbons wants the baseline, got it. Tried to get it up, but could not, but keeps the basketball. How about that for an effort? He got it blocked, slapped back at him, and he still came down with it. Okay, he's directing traffic out there now. That's Andre Tate. That's Cedric Glover. Tough angle shot, and he has scored 10 points. What a first half Glover is at. 24-20, a much-needed basket by the Cincinnati Bearcats, and they go to their big guy, Cedric Glover, to get it and go up by four. That fake by Holden. Jeff Flynn didn't go for it. He kicks it back outside to Sullivan. The Springer from 18 got it. you got to remember, Marty, there's, they've got three freshmen on the floor right now. This bench has produced very, very well for them this year. 24-22 with six and a half minutes remaining in what has been an exciting and interesting first half. Here goes Gibbons. He shovels it to Robinson. And traveling violation call. That's the seventh time that Cincinnati has turned it over. And it enables Keith Starks and Lewis Banks to get back in. Timeout. 6.25 remaining. Louisville trails by two. Back after this from your local station on the Raycom Sports and Entertainment Network.
Kroger salutes the fighting spirit of the Louisville Cardinals, their commitment to be the best, and Kroger brings you the best with cost-cutter prices. Save on Geno's frozen pizza, just 99 cents for the 7-ounce package. Selected varieties of Banquet Frozen Boneless Chicken Finger Food, two 9-ounce boxes, only $5. And Post Toasties Corn Flake Cereal, 99 cents for the 18-ounce box. Score with cost-cutter savings. Go Cards, go Krogering. Leave it to the good hands, people. Yesterday, when George Tucker left the Allstate Claim Center across the street, he figured the only thing that would bring him back was the pie he discovered. Unfortunately, the long, hot drive home exposed other minor damage that had gone undetected. Just the kind of thing Allstate Hidden Damage Protection insures him against. So today, Allstate gave well, George another check and a great new excuse for more pie. Allstate Hidden Damage Protection, another reason. You're in good hands with Allstate. Be sure to join us this Saturday, February the 11th, starting at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, as Raycom Sports presents Metro Conference Regional Action. One game will feature South Carolina's visit to Memphis State, and our other game pits these same Cincinnati Bearcats that you're watching tonight against the Southern Mississippi Golden Eagles from Hattiesburg. Please check your local listings for the station in your area carrying Metro Conference basketball. Two good ones on Saturday. And Louisville getting unbelievable production, which they have most of the year from their bench. And again, that bench, I have to emphasize, Marty, is mostly freshmen. Those three guys have been contributing. And also, Felton Spencer's come off and given them a pretty good first half. Felton Spencer picks up an offensive foul that turns it right back to the Bearcats. Jeff Lynn will sit down, and that man... Lavernus Robinson quickly back into the lineup. So, at the moment, Cincinnati going with Lewis Banks, Elnardo Givens, Lavernus Robinson, Keith Starks, and Cedric Lovers. First venture to the free line tonight. Five field goals and ten points. Just a shade under 70% from 15 feet away. Cincinnati now five out of seven from the line. And Banks, or uh, Glover rather, will have one more coming. You see with a three-point advantage, Glover shooting for four. And it's there. And again, the pressure. Look at Givens. He came up with a steal. Boy, I'll tell you, what a, what a first half this kid has played. I tell you, he was lucky. Larry Lowe, the official, was standing there, and he bounced the ball off of his chest. He didn't even expect him to get there that quickly. Gibbons gives it up to Banks, gets it back, and he's really directing traffic. I'll tell you what, there's no question about who runs the show on the floor when Alnardo Gibbons is in the lineup. Louisville in his own defense right now. Looks like a 2-3 matchup. It's tough to match up with the Cincinnati club the way they are because they don't have the, the size advantage. I'm talking about Cincinnati doesn't have the size advantage. Gibbons hooking oh. it up. Go! Oh, what a shot. Over Allison. What a shot by Alnardo Gibbons, and the Bearcats lead by six. He's unconscious. Here's Ellison. Nice look away pass to Spencer, but he was fouled as he released the basketball. And Glover said, hey, give me a break. They give him a break, all right, a second foul. Okay, this is 5'11", yes, against 6'10", and maybe the best player in the country, off of the glass. Thank you, bottom of the court. He just took a page out of Jay Burson's book. That was the same kind of move he moved, made against Louisville in that brilliant performance a couple of Sundays ago down in Louisville. Tony Yates, my man, you've got to play him tonight. <laughs> they are playing. Ellison has had but a field goal, and he'll get one more free throw. Tell you what, he's got him well prepared to play tonight. He's been a lot hotter than you're looking at him right now, folks. I think he's still thinking about that Florida State loss on Saturday. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, they, they've really lost two tough, tough games here. Southern Miss, they had a 21-point lead in the second half. 13 points up they were against Florida State and lose that one by one. Loose ball picked up by Robinson. And Louisville did a much better job of their press that time. They almost came up with the trap and the steal right at midcourt. 28-24 Bearcats. They have led by as many as six. They are up right now by four. Louisville really basically has gone to his own defense, and they've stayed in it the last five or six trips down the floor by Cincinnati. There he patient. Robinson Crump felt very comfortable man-to-man -man matching up with the Cincinnati team. The bank is open for business. As Lewis Banks knocks one down, he has five points, and a 
it's a 30 to 24 lead as the Bearcats again go up by six. Making right, going left to Sullivan. Now L.A. Smith on the move, too short. And there's Gibbons again. He feeds to Robinson, one head fake, put it up. Block shot for contact before he went airborne. A foul is called. Marty, Cincinnati's doing everything right. They put great pressure on LeBrafford Smith to get a bad shot out of him, and he took a bad shot. Look at this. Good switch that time. Banks there to give him all kinds of problems, some obstacles. Gibbons comes up with a rebound. Here he comes, mighty might down the left side, right up the middle. Kimbrough retreating. Look at the bounce pass. Robinson's there, and Kimbrough's there to foul it. Good work by Cincinnati running the break. Well, you mentioned the bad, ill-advised shot by L.A. Smith, and we talked before the telecast tonight. He's had an in-and-out sophomore year. Well, he has, and I think he's been very, very inconsistent. He's the one player that I think from the outside that they really need to depend on. I was looking at his stats. Against UNLV, he had four. Against Southern Miss, he had eight. Ohio State, he had 23. Virginia Tech, seven. Memphis State, three. Florida State, 12. I'll give you some idea of how up and down he's been the last couple of weeks. Got the roll on the second shot. Robinson, two out of four from the free throw line. And that's the biggest for Cincinnati. Seven point advantage at 31 to 24. 420 to go. First half. Ball is chipped. Sullivan picks it up. Shooting over Starks. Didn't get the bounce. And that's going to be a foul. Possibly number three on Felton Spencer. Now, I think it's Kimbrough. I think it may be Kimbrough. It'll be the second on Tony Kimbrough. So Kenny Payne. Tony Kimbrough and L.A. Smith, three starters, all with two fouls apiece. Eric Sullivan with a good cut to the basket right there. He had a pretty good shot. Just shot it a little bit short. You see Kimbrough right up on his back right there. Good position on the inside, too. As Denny Crum looks on, Lavertus Robinson at the line again. He's been a busy man at that spot so far in the first half. Here lies Louisville's beating Cincinnati six in a row. 23 out of the last 27. Last year, they beat them in overtime here. The Cardinals did. And then down at Freedom Hall, LeBradford Smith had a career-high 32 to lead Louisville to a 12-point win. But it was very, very close until the very last couple of minutes of play. Cincinnati's now gone to a zone trap, a 1-2-2. Louisville beats it pretty easily. Purvis with a good pass. And Spencer reaps the dividends as he scores points number four and five to make it 33-26. Louisville hasn't come out of that zone defense. They're matching up out of it. Thanks on top to Gibbons. Sullivan floating down inside. She's the Bradford Smith on the board. It's almost like a 1-1-3. One, one, not going to take that shot over Ellison. They swing at the other side to Lavertus Robinson. Wanted to go inside to Starks. Couldn't do it. Sheila Bradford Smith, he's pointing the ball right now. When the ball goes to the wing, you'll see Sullivan 34. He'll work back and forth toward the wings. Could open it up out top. Contact, no whistle, and a follow by Banks. Who comes that zone defense? Look at that idea. They may want a little bit of a breather right here. They've been playing pretty hard the first 16, 17 minutes of this basketball game. They go out of that man-to-man, -man, sit back in the zone a little bit and relax. But don't relax too much because that guy will score. He will that as he drains one from 14 feet. A six-point first half for the senior out of Savannah, Georgia. 35-28 Cincinnati. Bearcats only one and four in the Metro Conference against Louisville at five and one. Here's the steal, and there's a missed layup to tip in by Ellison. That's a great follow-up. Make sure you go in. You never know when your teammate's going to miss a layup. Purvis went right with it. Don't and give up that dribble. Ellison the steal. steal as Ellison tipped it away. And it's up no good. The rebound. Glover had it, but it's picked up by Robinson. And now it's Cincinnati's turn at the other end. Gibbons on the baseline, Starks, no good. The tip goes. Either Glover or Starks. Let's see who they give it to. Set 
Frederick Lover credited with a field goal. He now has 14, and Ellison from 15 feet away. He's lighting it up, Marty. He sure He's is. lighting it up. Took him a little while to get started, but three quick field goals, and he's keeping his club within striking distance. The count is on, and there starts against Spencer. Spencer gets a foul, and right now, Keith Starks having a hard time scoring in an empty gym. He's had some pretty good shots, and for the most part, has been relatively unsuccessful here in the first half. Marty, let me tell you what you do in this situation. Put the ball in the glass. Throw it on the other side of the glass, let the guy catch it and jam it. It's hard to bounce past the ball. The best thing, the best thing to do in that situation when you know you've got nobody back on that side, don't use the floor as your bounce pass. Use the backboard as your pass. And just kick it off the glass, let the guy catch it and jam it. Second foul against Felton Spencer, and it'll be Cedric Lover on the free throw line. 14-point first half, six field goals, and two out of two from the line. Right now, Cincinnati 10 out of 13 from the free throw line. They are shooting well here in the first half, and that's been an area that at times has cost them some problems. Okay, something else they're doing well, too, is rebounding. They're actually kicking Louisville all over the glass. They've done it against a whole lot of people this season. A minute 34 remaining in the first half. The Bearcats lead by seven. We'll be back. BMW 325iS, Mercedes 560SL, outstanding, but compare them to Riata by Buick. Riata has more standard luxury features than BMW, but thousands less, and Riata's contemporary styling is less than half Mercedes price. In fact, Consumer's Digest calls Riata one of the best buys in domestic cars. Riata by Buick. The competition pales by comparison. The great American Most personal computers are like a two-lane highway, which is fine, until there's so much information, even important data, gets stuck. But you can have more lanes for information in your system right now with an IBM invention called Microchannel in many IBM Personal System 2 computers. It's putting an end to roadblocks and speed limits, so you'll be going places faster today and down the road. When you're... Mustangs of SMU, Saturday, South Carolina at... Memphis State, we talked about that game earlier, and you'll be down at Hattiesburg with Cincinnati and Southern Miss. I indeed will, and then on Sunday, of course, Louisville and UCLA. A little bit of a homecoming yep. for Denny Crum. Not a great one. I asked him today, I said, you going back home? He said, no, Louisville's my home. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look at the Metro Conference standings. Uh, we talked at the top how Florida State had the one-half game lead over Louisville. Their win tonight will enable them to hang on to first place, even if Louisville should win tonight. And the rest of the conference standing, South Carolina, Memphis State, Southern Miss, Cincinnati trying to make it a second win in the Metro, and of course, Virginia Tech, an up and down season. Let's take a look at our Metro Conference Player of the Week, and boy, you talk about fine guards in college basketball. Can this kid, Bimbo Coles, get it done? How about 39 point per game average? And you know the thing about him is, of course, he was the Olympic guard this past year. Marty, he is such an excellent player. Not only can he shoot the ball, but he delivers it well on his assist. He does everything he wants to do with the basketball. I haven't found anybody yet that can stop him. Well, the teams are back on the floor, and we'll be back to take a look at the first half statistics and the second half of action in a moment. When you race Formula One cars at speeds exceeding 200 miles an hour, you're bound to gain a great deal of valuable information about engine technology. You might expect us to keep information like that under lock and key. But we prefer to keep it someplace a little more accessible. The Acura Integra Sports Sedan. If you want to move ahead in any career, you have to know what most employers want. Like how to work with a team, how to handle responsibility, how to take on a tough job and see it through. You can learn all these things in the Army. So when you do set off on the road to success, you'll already be in the driver's seat.
You may not see me in the sports pages, but I play for one of the world's largest teams, Days Inns, the fastest growing hotel chain in the world. Our most valuable players are the 300 Days Inn owners right here in the Metro Conference. They'll give you a great room at a great price with restaurants, pools, lounges, even meeting rooms. When it comes to great prices and great locations, see why the professional traveler stays with us. Tonight's Metro Conference game is being brought to you by Ford. By Miller Draft. And by Days In. It's 39-35 Cincinnati halfway through this Metro Conference battle at the Cincinnati Gardens. And let's take a look at the first half numbers. Louisville and Cincinnati, Larry. Well, you can see Cincinnati at 47%. Louisville at only 42%. Very, very much off right now. Eight, eight of ten free throws for Louisville, 11 of 14 for Cincinnati. Both of them shooting pretty well. Let's take a look. Look at the rebounding, 22 to 13 in favor of Cincinnati. Turnovers, Cincinnati committing 10 while Louisville's committed but eight. Here's the individual leading scores. Ellison with 10, Spencer with eight, Payne and Kimbrough and Sullivan all with four, Holden with three, and Williams with two. Nobody in foul trouble. Spencer continues to play well off the Louisville bench. Uh, Cedric Glover having what could be a career night for the senior and native of Mississippi. He has not missed a shot from the field. Six out of six from the floor and four for four from the free throw line. And if we had to pick a player of the game based on the first half of basketball, Elnardo Gibbons would be the guy. Well, it'd be he or Glover. Glover on the scoring, but Gibbons on the total game. You know, not only did he have three assists, but he also had three steals in the first half. You know, if you just get one in a ball game, you're doing a pretty good job. How about that loft right over the top of Purvis Ellison? We talked about the second choice of our most valuable player in the first half. It's got to go to Glover. Watch his turn move inside. Gets Ellison on his hip. Good dish by Tate in there. He turns, looks, puts the ball low, gets Purvis down a little bit. Maybe he has a little trouble getting up with that knee. Pushes off, gets it up over Ellison, and buries it. Cedric Glover with an excellent first half. And an addendum to the accolades that we are laying on Eldardo Gibbons. He is also one of four Bearcats who has hauled down four rebounds. So you talk about a total game, and he's given it to him. Four rebounds, three assists, three steals. He's only one of four from the field, but the guy's got to do something that doesn't look good. How about, on our, hey, how about Cedric Glover? Six of six from the field and four of four from the free throw line. Perfect night. 16 points for Glover to lead all scores. He is halfway home toward his career high of 32 at the University of Cincinnati. And the interesting thing is, in talking to a couple of professional scouts on hand here tonight, Daryl Hedrick of the Cleveland Cavaliers, George Irvin of the Indiana Pacers, Bob Whitehour of the Philadelphia 76ers, the thing that have impressed them is the fact that in scoring 16, Glover has been shooting the ball dead in the face of Purvis Ellison. All right, if you're looking for a reason why Louisville might be down by four at halftime, you can look at LeBradford Smith. He is 0 for 5 in the first half, and Tony Kimbrough is 1 for 4. So combined, they are 1 for 9 in the first half. We still have 20 minutes of basketball remaining. As you look at Glover's one of many fine first half moves, and the second half underway, it's Gibbons, it's Banks, it's Glover, it's Starks, and it's Tate. The same lineup that opened for Tony Yates, and the same five on the floor for Cincinnati. Payne and uh, Keith Williams, Tony Kimbrough, Purvis Ellison, and L.A. Smith. Banks in trouble, gets it off to Williams, and now back outside to Gibbons. Something a little different in the second half. Louisville's opened up in a zone defense. They open man-to-man. -man. They work it low. Starks has it slapped away by Ellison. The follow by Banks. He got it. Ellison with another blocked shot, but he kicked it right into Banks' hands, who just threw up a rainbow. You see draws first blood, the lead of six at 41 to 35. Seconds into the second half of play here at Cincinnati Gardens. It was an announced sellout five days ago, and they have been rocking and rolling in this legendary facility tonight. Williams puts up a high arching jump shot. It's loose. It belongs to Lewis Banks. The kick out to Gibbons. He's looking for the easy hoop, plays it off to Tate, who lost it, but the ever-present Mr. Gibbons runs it down. Leonardo Gibbons pointed to himself, and he says, that was my fault. He said, I made a bad pass, and he did. He threw it right on his shoulder, and he's a little too close to throw that hard a pass. They'd like to get it inside to Glover, but they're all over him. Gibbons will try from the outside, and yes, 
he can hit the outside jump shot. Marty, if they can do that, that'll open the middle up, and it'll give those guys down inside Starks and Glover more room to operate. You see is outscored Louisville four nothing to begin the second half, and they lead by eight. Their biggest lead has been nine. Quick pass inside, loose. L.A. Smith gets it back. Thanks, shot up and in. His first points tonight. Here comes Louisville right back with that pressure. 2-2-1. Two, two, They're floating with it. They'll try to trap it midcourt and do it this time. Leonardo Givens handling. There's a trap, but Givens beats it with a pass to Andre Tate. Bit of a matchup now by Louisville. See Williams float down inside. Starts. He hit it. He did not have a real good shooting first half, but he rings the bell off the baseline. The lead is eight for Cincinnati. Here's Ellison turning, shooting, and scoring. Boy, what a touch he has. Marty, got the best hands in basketball. I'll tell you what, I bet I visited with 20 pro scouts this year, and we all talk about a lot of players. I said, guys, he's my pick. Tate, he threw up a Hale Murray. Banks fails on the follow shot, trying to save it, but could not do it. Larry, a point about Louisville, and I know you've stated it in the past. You really like this team's chances of getting to the Final Four. I do. I like them for a lot of reasons. I mean, I saw the 85-86 club play an awful lot, and they remind me of that basketball team. The only thing that I think they need to get really under control is their guard situation. The Bradford Smith and Keith Williams need to be a lot more consistent at the guard play, and if they are, then I think this team could go as far as they want to take them. You just saw a good defensive play by Andre Tate. Smith had him beaten inside, and he stretched out that long arm to knock it out of bounds. Kenny Payne outside, Purvis Ellison checks out the defense, gives it back to Payne, who's had a very quiet evening here in the Queen City. They put up two shots in the first half. Kimbrough, too long. Glover climbs the ladder. Here's Gibbons. Up ahead it goes to Banks. He falls, he kept the dribble alive, he needs help, and he finds it. And Andre Tate, the no-look pass, and the shot fails for a foul is ball. A fine play by Banks an equally fine play by Tate in getting it off inside and allowing Starks to draw the foul. I got a question. How long does Banks sit in the three-second lane? Good question. A long time. <laughs> watch the ball come out. Leonardo Givens has got it. See Banks on the left side. Now watch him lose his footing here. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> Been a long time, folks. <laughs> Longer than you're supposed to. Starks will shoot a third foul on Tony Kimbrough, who now will be forced to sit down and belt and Spencer in quickly as Kimbrough heads toward the Louisville bench. Well, Danny Crump having a long conversation with Bradford Smith on the end of the Louisville bench over there. Starks gets his seventh point. There's the conversation being held right there. Andy Crump just wanted to pull the Bradford out and discuss with him some of the things that are going on out there. Cincinnati 12 out of 15 from the free throw line, now 13 out of 16. You know, and those things he's going to discuss is, look, you got to control the basketball game. You're the guy that's out there handling the basketball, you and Keith. Somebody's got to get control of it. Pressure by Cincinnati. And Lewis Banks has just picked up his third foul. I'd like to point out something that was conducted before the game got underway here tonight. Fitting and extremely sad, the moment of silence for a gentleman who was an outstanding football talent here at the University of Cincinnati, played with distinction in the National Football League, and was one of the fine young coaches in college football in Joe Morrison, who unexpectedly passed away earlier this week down in Columbia due to a heart attack. Our condolences, of course, go to the Morrison family. Let's see if those messages that uh, Denny Crum was trying to convey to LeBradford Smith got through. Looks like he's just out there running the club right now. Got it. Kenny Payne. Denny Crum would love to see him generate some offense in the second half. He has scored only six. And here come the Cardinals again. Trailing by six at 47 to 41. 2-2-1 two, two, again, that famous press made famous by UCLA and carried on by Denny Crum at Louisville. Nice job by Gibbons. Glover foul. Boy, I'll tell you, when he broke that trap, he took it right to the basket, and Glover got the pass and drew the foul. All you got to do is break that first wave. Now watch it. Boom, he's through the first wave. Once he got through those two guys, there was nobody back. The numbers were in the favors of the guys in the white shirts. Good pick up by Glover right there, and you see the foul by Kenny Payne. That's the way to attack it, isn't it? Absolutely. 
You find the opening, you just take advantage of it. You know what I hate about it? I like to see clubs go ahead and try to score when they beat the press. Absolutely. A lot of clubs don't want to do that. They want to beat the press, pull it off to the side, set their half-court game up. If you've got talented athletes, you go ahead and break the press, you go on and score with them. Now you're doing the defense a real favor if you pull it out because you can get a lot of high percentage shots once you beat it. That's the first time Glover's missed from the line all night long. So that, is that our basketball coaching point of the night? That's yours. <laughs> you have more credibility in that area than I do. 48-41 with 16 minutes to go. Here comes Cincinnati with backcourt pressure. It goes to the big guy. He puts it on the floor and now gets it off to Kenny Payne. Saved by Everett Sullivan. They lead him open. And he shows him why they should. Oh, I really like this. Yes, sir. Party. I really like him. Three field goals and six points. 49, 48, 43. Bearcats lead the Cardinals. Here's Tate. Again, that 1-1-3 one, one, matchup zone. You can see LeBron and Smith right there and Everett Sullivan. Ball goes to the wing. Sullivan goes all the way down the lane. Whoa, he starts. Nice turnaround jump shot. Starks has scored six of his ten points. In the second half, at the other end, L.A. Smith misses. Rebound number five for Eldardo Gibbons. And he's taking it to the cutting Andre Tate. Out of bounds. You see ball. That will bring about a timeout. 15 minutes and five seconds remaining in the game. Cincinnati leads by seven, 50 to 43. Genuine, never heat pasteurized. A beer that's made unlike any other. Cold filtered to give you the rich, smooth taste of real draft beer. That's the mark of a great beer. Cold filtered Miller Genuine Draft. It's as real as it gets. There's no reason for you to jump through hoops when you're looking for a great room at a great price. Just look for a Days Inn, hotel, or suite. Our 300 owners right here in the Metro Conference are not only bringing you this conference broadcast, but they're bringing you a great room at a great price, with restaurants, lounges, even meeting rooms. So if you're looking for a great room at a great price, choose a Days Inn. Staying anywhere else is a foul. Smith's Furniture and Appliance is celebrating the grand opening of their newest store on Shelbyville Road. Their biggest and best store ever features the finest quality and selection of home furnishings with new styles and new brands, such as Cochrane, solid wood, and classic leather furniture. Smith's new expanded displays include a tremendous appliance and electronics department with a wide variety of brand names. Don't miss the grand opening of Smith's beautiful new Shelbyville Road store. Celebrate at any of their six locations. Who? Smith's Furniture and Appliance. That's who. There's a score, there's the time remaining, and we don't have enough time to tell you about the accomplishments of that man right there, Denny Crump. We can tell you that Larry and I will be selecting the fourth player of the game at the conclusion of tonight's telecast, so stay with us. Leonardo Gibbons, Cedric Glover, obvious candidates for Cincinnati, Purvis Ellison, and Felton Spencer. Certainly candidates so far for Louisville. Bear catch by seven. A couple of pump fakes by Robinson. Cross court to Tate. Gibbons right back to Andre Tate. He drives. He stops. He needs help, and he finds it outside. Tate will go for three. And Glover claims the rebound and kicks it right back outside as they get a fresh 45. Cincinnati continues that domination on the backboard. They're getting good second and third opportunities. Global stays in that zone defense. Still looks like a 1-1-3. One, one, You'll see Sullivan in the middle. Ball goes to the wing. He floats back inside to try to help Kenny Payne and Felton Spencer. Tate will try it again. And again he misses. And this time, it's hauled down by L.A. Smith. They work it low to Spencer. Turn around. Shoot it up. Didn't get the bounce. And there's Keith Starks. Good position inside. Lover. Tate cutting, lost it out of bounds, and touch last by Kenny Payne. Well, Gibbons got that ball up the floor very quickly into the hands of uh, Glover. Glover tried to get it to Tate. 
Running the break quickly. Louisville having difficulty getting back. Tate triggers to Robinson. They'll look at the zone defense. Tate will try one more time. And the third time is a charm. Tony Yates wants a three. And so do the Cincinnati Bearcats. But it'll be a deuce for Andre Tate, his third field goal. Marty, that was really close. Sure was. Very, very close. Nine points and equals Cincinnati's biggest lead. Payne and Spencer. He got two people airborne, and Cedric Glover was the man who made contact. That's his third personal foul. You know, one thing I've noticed since LeBradford Smith came back in the basketball game is how many times Louisville has now taken the ball inside. Have you noticed every trip they've had the ball since he's come back in the game? I think the message got back and got translated from guard to the rest of the team. I want the ball inside, and that's where they're taking it right now. Spencer has What, if I got a guy like Felton Spencer, seven feet, Purvis Hill and 6'10", I'm going to put it in there, too. And you know what that'll ha what'll happen is then they'll play back in. The defense will converge back in to try to help. Denny Crum knows that. It opens up for the guys outside. Second shot on the way and in. Spencer, good free throw shooter. He missed his first tonight and has hit four in a row. Still, Louisville down 52 to 45. Tate in open court. Looks and gives it up to Alvardo Gibbons, the Lexington, Kentucky native to LaBronis Robinson. Tate wants it in the worst way, but Ellison shut him down, and it's Gibbons draining it from outside. Louisville recovered very quickly and got over in Tate's face, but to no avail because Gibbons buried one just right at the free throw line. 54-45. Here's Ellison. One way he fakes, the other way he goes. The bank shot too strong, and there he is again. Have mercy. They'll blow the roof off this joint if they score this time down. Too soft by Robinson. Out of bounds. And it looked like it was last touch by Louisville. The official awards the ball to the Cardinals. Tony Yates playing the role of cheerleader. Denny Crump, the role of a traffic cop. And L.A. Smith over the timeline against El Nardo Gibbons. Big guy Spencer, he almost picked up that pivot foot. I thought maybe he slid it a little bit. Yep. As Dizzy Dean would have said, he slid it a little. <laughs> Can he paint out front? There Quickly it is. they That's go. A foul. And yeah, that, take it inside. He starts number two. A foul he could afford to take. Because once it gets down in that area to Purvis Ellison, you're asking for trouble. Well, look at Ellison. They've cleared out the side here. There's nobody on this side. LeBradford Smith just gets it down in there. You can see the foul over the back of Purvis Ellison. It's got to be the Louisville strategy. They've gone inside so much in the last three to four minutes. And you know what you're doing? You're also piling up, piling up fouls, Marty. You'll get a lot of fouls on those guys because they've got to reach around. They do such a good job of getting low position. That's three team fouls against Cincinnati. Long jump shot. Three-pointer by Everett Sullivan. When it, when it gets down inside, it opens it up outside. And that may well be the shot that finally gets this Cardinal ball club going. 54-48. Elnardo Gibbons up ahead to Andre Tate. It's Glover from the baseline, and he is still perfect from the floor. What a great pass by Tate. Good bounce pass. Penetrate the gap. Once they converge on you, drop it off your teammate on the baseline, and Glover was ready. 19. Points for Cedric Glover and seven for seven from the floor. Every time Louisville starts to make noise as if they're going to make a run, Cincinnati comes back with a big basket. Kenny Payne didn't get the bounce, but he did draw the foul. Glover, Robinson, incredulous looks on their face. One of them was a perpetrator. And again, Louisville takes the ball back inside. Ellison got the ball in the right position to Kenny Payne. What happened? He drew the foul. Tony Yates probably sitting there thinking about that. He's saying, you know, they're going inside a lot. My guys are fouling a lot. Am I deep enough? Do I have enough players on the bench? The many questions the college coach poses to himself. Payne, three for three from the line, seven points. Senior out of Laurel, Mississippi, and he has been a good one for Denny Crum's Louisville Cardinals. Yeah. 
two successes, and we've got a timeout. 11.23 remaining, Cincinnati 56, and Louisville 50. Don't go away. We'll be back. It's been the world's best-selling car six years running. Maybe it's because of features, reputation, or overall value. Whatever it is, it's no big surprise if you've driven a Ford Escort lately. Winning the world over, have you been behind the wheel? Winning the world over. Get 4.9% financing or $500 cash bonus on 89 Escort. that I've never been Seeing things that I may never see again I can't wait to get on the road again To help keep your car on the road get Valvoline High Performance Motor Oil Valvoline makes the highest quality motor oil recommended by any car manufacturer Valvoline Motor oil is not just motor oil Now the final chapter students in Boswell's book of etiquette Personal hygiene. I suggest the maximum protection of Right Guard Sport Stick from Gillette. Antiperspirant and deodorant. Anything less would be uncivilized. An invitation to join us this Saturday, February the 11th, starting at 2 Eastern Time. Raycom Sports presents Metro Conference Regional Action. One game will feature South Carolina's visit to Memphis State, and our other game pits these same Bearcats that you're watching tonight against the Southern Mississippi Golden Eagles from Hattiesburg. Please check your local listings for the station in your area carrying Metro Conference basketball. I'll bet you are big in Hattiesburg. I'm big everywhere. <laughs> I agree with that. Here's a field goal percentage shooting second half. Louisville at 50%, Cincinnati at 49%. They're both shooting about even. Good basketball game, Marty. This is as good a game as I have seen all year long. Good rivalry. 11 10 to go. Cincinnati by six. Curtis Robinson appeared to have a shot, but he elected to pass it up. He won't pass this one up, and didn't get the bounce. And Glover, a big foul, Larry, his fourth of the game, and it comes with 11-0-1 remaining. Now, all those questions that Tony Yates was asking himself before we went to break begin, begin to come right to the surface. He's got to make a decision about Glover. Is he going to pull him out, go to the bench? Or is he going to leave him in there and take a chance? I think he takes him out. Good job by Ellison to get to the ball. You know, I've had a lot of coaches tell me the rebounding is just not necessarily the ability to jump, but just the ability to work hard and get in position. And I think that's what that young man does right there, as well as does Purvis Ellison. Jeff Lynn now replacing Cedric Glover. Now they change defenses. They went to his own. Turn around by Ellison. In and out. Loose ball. Baseline, Kenny Payne with that quick release, air ball, Robinson to Gibbons. It goes cross court and out of bounds. And I'll tell you, if that's not the first mistake Gibbons has made tonight, it's the second. I tell you, they had the good break. It's just that he threw the ball behind him. Watch the rebound. They'll come down. Look at Gibbons come down with his fastball. This is a play before. This is not that one. See Tate catch it. Look at this nice layup. Left Pretty hand good. Over goal. the shoulder, huh? <laughs> Ooh, 11 times now, Cincinnati has turned it over. Kenny Payne dumping it off. Ellison, he wanted to go to Spencer inside. Couldn't get him open. L.A. Smith gets the ball, shakes his head negatively. They will recycle the offense. Vinny Crum is yelling instructions to the club from the sidelines. 13, 12, 11 on uh, the shot clock as Ellison launches. Rebounded by Spencer. Jam it. That's what they need. They need somebody to take over on the inside. Well, Delton Spencer at 7 feet at 265 can do a whole lot of taking over inside. They've almost changed their tactics now. They're going to go to the man-to-man -man full court pressure. 58-52. The Bearcats in front. Robinson on top. 
That's Louisville really packs it in inside now, and that's all defense. Now drops into single digits. Eight seconds, seven, six. Jeff Lynn to, to Leonardo Gibbons, and he throws up a prayer with only two seconds on the shot clock. Now, let's remember what happened here Saturday when UC started to work the clock with just under four minutes remaining and leading by six. Their game went completely to pieces, and Florida State won. Marty, we're reaching that point right now with 8.42 left to go, and Cincinnati with that six-point lead. I want to make a point about this right here. You know, oftentimes when you're trying to work against a shot clock on defense, when it gets under five seconds, you've got to be very careful about committing a foul. You don't want to foul after that because you know the club's going to, that you're playing against is going to have to throw up a bad shot. Gibbons, a six-point, seven rebound. That's right, seven rebound night. And with 8.42 to go in the game, one Steve Jackson has just emerged from Tony Yates' doghouse and is on the floor. He was disciplined, has not played in the two previous games. Yates was bum about the reasoning for the disciplinary action. But Steve Jackson sees his first action of the night in his first action in three games. A three-pointer by Everett Sullivan. And here come the Cardinals. guy has got ice in his veins and a freshman 59 to 55 with eight minutes and 20 seconds remaining there's jackson handling the ball out of hammond louisiana andre tate and now keith stark cedric lover on the bench with four personal fouls gibbons drives throws it up and in What can't you do? <laughs> he can do everything. 61 to 55. <laughs> Sullivan, who hit the three-pointer just a moment ago, lays it off to L.A. Smith. Back to the freshman and to the senior All-American, Curtis Ellison. <laughs> Ellison to the baseline, to the basket. And a good rebound by Jackson as he beat the taller Ellison and Spencer to claim the rebound. Three guys from red shirts fought each other that time. Cincinnati scored in its last possession. Jackson matched up against defender Kenny Payne. Gibbons has it knocked away and out of bounds. Good defense by Kenny Payne. The two teams will get a blow with 7.07 remaining. There's timeout. Cincinnati leading by six. Back after this from your local station on the Raycom Sports and Entertainment Network. Leave it to the good hands, people. Memories. Nothing evokes them like the house they grew up in. The first stairway he climbed. The first railing they peeked through. The first banister she floated down. All part of the reason the Allstate Home Replacement Cost Guarantee exists to help rebuild your home, whatever the cost, right down to the spot where Dad hung his hat. The Allstate Home Replacement Cost Guarantee. Another reason. You're in good hands with Allstate. Recently, Diet Coke has been presenting some hard-to-understand statistics. Diet Pepsi now brings you the facts. Last year, two million families stopped buying Diet Coke, and over a million new families started buying Diet Pepsi. So what's giving Diet Coke such a distorted view? Gentlemen, I trust we're all seeing this the same way. The real move is to Diet Pepsi. As you're sitting in the comfort of your own home watching some very exciting basketball, you're probably wondering about who your player of the game is. Well, Larry and I will be selecting the fourth player of the game when we wrap this one up, so stay with us. And there are a number of candidates for that accolade tonight. We talked about Gibbons and Glover. They're the leading scorers, Ellison, Sullivan, and Spencer. That Louisville trio all with a dozen points. Well, I'll tell you this. Our vote on that would be a lot easier than what they had to do in Washington earlier this week. Yeah, a little bit easier. <laughs> Just a little bit. 
6.55 to go. It's Felton Spencer hooking it up. No good. Underneath for the rebound. Andre Tate. I'd vote myself a raise, though. I'd go for that. It'd be hard for me not to. I'm sorry. Cedric Glover went out with 11.01 remaining. Cincinnati by six. They've been able to pretty much maintain that lead. That's where it stands right now. And the big guy still reclining across the way for Cincinnati. It'll be interesting to see when Tony Angel likes to bring him back. Unbelievable. That's that right there. I'll tell you what's unbelievable about is the fact that Louisville only has five rebounds in the second half. Thanks and given are tied for high honors with Cincinnati with seven apiece. Ellison has claimed five for Louisville. Starts with only three seconds on the shot clock. They're not going to get much out of it. And oh, the shot of the night. I don't believe it. The shot of the night. Three-pointer by Keith Starks. Have mercy one more time. Good move by Ellison to get the ball away from inside. He's got paint open. Bingo. You can't leave him wide open. I'll tell you one thing. The first three-point attempt of the season, and Keith Starks has just made the highlight film. 64 to 57. Oh, I'd hate to have to be his teammate and listen to that for the next two weeks. <laughs> Here's Jackson for three. And Starks commits a foul as Spencer, or Kimbrough, emphatically hauled down the rebound. That's number three on Keith Starks. And team foul number six against the Bearcats. Let's go back and watch this one again. Because you're going to see it a hundred times, you people who live in Cincinnati. You're going to see it a lot for the next couple of weeks. They ought what to give him five for that one. What a shot. Team foul situation favoring Louisville. The jumper by Payne, and he's hit two in a row. A dozen points for Kenny Payne. And eight have come here in the second half. Yeah, but more importantly, two in a row. Five-point advantage for Cincinnati. Five minutes remaining. It's 64 to 59. Givens to the baseline. He falls down. And he deals to Lavertus Robinson. He fakes, he fakes, he shoots. And he was standing on the end line. All right, Louisville a chance now. Down five to get within three or perhaps two if they can light it up a little bit out there. Kenny Payne's at two in a row. 13 turnovers now against the Bearcats. Everett Sullivan, he looks to Kenny Payne, but instead he goes the other way to L.A. Smith. On top to Tony Kimbrough. Knocked out of bounds by Andre Tate. Right now, Louisville, as you look at Denny Crump, operating in the backcourt with a freshman in Everett Sullivan and a sophomore in L.A. Smith, and with 4.34 remaining, Back comes Cedric Glover, along with Lewis Banks. And I'll tell you, Louisville, or Cincinnati, did a pretty good job in the absence of almost seven minutes of Cedric Glover. Well, it's Armageddon time. Time to walk up there and make the decision about who's going to win and who's going to lose. We're in the final four and a half minutes. They work it low to L.A. Smith, shooting over the shorter Gibbons, but deflected by Starks and rebounded by Glover. He makes his presence felt right now. What do you think? You start letting the air out a little bit? If he does, it'll be a reminder of what happened here on Saturday when they completely went away from their game. This club, Cincinnati, is best in transition. And when they have to really work that shot clock, they really seem to lose something. Here's Glover. Fading, shooting, no, and a rebound to Kenny Payne. Well, Bradford Smith, quickly front court. No numbers, he's two on three. Got it to Ellison. Good position, foul, foul. Givens, yeah. Foul. You see Purvis turn around, look at LeBradford, and he says, that's the way, my man. Get it to me, I'll be ready. Watch it again, LeBradford Smith, I think has played very intelligently since he came back off of that bench to come back on the floor. I think Denny Crum just told him to go out and run the club since he's come back on this floor. They really have been much more patient with the basketball and gotten a lot better shots on the inside. Ellison has scored 12 points and only two here in the second half. <laughs> 64 to 60. This would put Louisville as close as they have been in a long, long while. Nope. 
And who's this foul on? Kimbrough and Glover, the recipient. Cincinnati will inbound. That's a fourth foul on Tony Kimbrough. Time out on the floor, 341 remaining. Anybody's game, Cincinnati by four. And we'll be right back after this. Right now, the only thing that would taste better than a nice cold one is a cold filtered one. Man, you sure go for one of these. Because if you want a beer whose rich, smooth draft taste hasn't been changed by heat pasteurization, we've got it down cold. Right. Cold filtered Miller Genuine Draft. It's as real as it gets. Uh, we have a slightly revised market. I'm, I'm sitting there behind my desk. It's 2 o'clock Saturday morning. I look up and the phone system's all lit up. And I call the service company. It's a recording. They only service the phone systems between 9 and 5 weekdays. And what are you supposed to do? Close the place up and go to the beach on the weekends? Better yet, call the crooks up. Tell them to take the weekend off. Give me a hot, dusty day any time of year. Give me my favorite Ford and mud up to here. Cause I love getting dirty. Yes, I love getting dirty. So give me rain and puddles in my 4 by 4 Give me a brand new Ranger and I'll never be bored. Cause I love getting dirty. A newly designed Ford Ranger. Yes, I love Get 4.9% financing or up to $750 cash bonus on 89 Rangers. Accommodations arranged through Hilton. Come sample our classic American hospitality at any of nearly 300 locations across the U.S. For reservations, call 1-800-HILTONS. Travel arranged through Eastern. Some like it hot, and this winter, Eastern has the hottest fares to the hottest destinations. Eastern to the Caribbean, the hottest ticket out of town. A lot of folks wondering if lightning will strike twice. That kind of lightning that they're thinking about, Tony Yates would like to defuse. That is losing the lead late, right now clinging to a four-point advantage and with the ball. You saw the foul problems right there for both clubs. Louisville with a good press. Cincinnati looks like they're going to break it. They let Banks come front court unhindered, which has been a rarity tonight. Gibbons, three minutes and 30 seconds to go. 64 Cincinnati, 60 Louisville. Lou Banks puts it on the floor against Everett Sullivan, turns a corner, rejected by Ellison, big play, up ahead to Sullivan, damn it. Great pass by Lord Bradford Smith on an excellent block by Purvis Ellison. The rejection started it all, and Sullivan scores a breakaway. Louisville trails by only two. Gibbons takes it to the hole, fakes the pass, puts it up, and you what I can do. Boy, it's been a night of highlights here at the Cincinnati Gardens. Kenny Payne drives on Banks, pulls up with a jump shot and drills it. 14 points for the senior from Laurel, Mississippi. 66 to 64 with two and a half to go. Baseline starts. Too soft. Allison. Two hands it out front to Everett Sullivan. Louisville looking for the time. The big guy tries it and gets it. Folks, it's been a long road back, but Louisville has climbed. The sixth time tonight that they have been tied. And Everett Sullivan commits the Louisville personal foul. Now, that's only five team fouls. They still have one more to waste to the final 2-10. I'm thinking there is a magic on the floor tonight. Only it's not 6'8, it's 5'11 magic. Watch this man. Oh, little fake right there. Purvis tries to come over and block it. Forget it. He just kissed it off the glass. You see, with 120 seconds remaining in the game, finds itself tied with Louisville. 66 all. Good trap. Good corner and trap. Ball got the strip. away from Banks. Picked up by Payne. And here comes L.A. Smith. Cincinnati drops back defensively. Tate got a hand on it. 
Sullivan picked it up. Tony Kimbrough. And a foul on Keith Starks. Purvis got an extra shot. <laughs> he knew he was fouled. That's a fourth foul. That's his fourth personal foul. On the junior forward, Keith Starks. And we now have a timeout. 137 remaining. Cincinnati and Louisville dead even at 66 apiece. And we'll return after this. When we played for Oakland, we did not appreciate losing. Our motto was, just win, baby. Yeah, but now we just like to play a quiet game of pool and drink a few cold Miller Lights. Lights brewed from the ground up so it tastes great. Not like some watered-down version of a regular beer. Your turn, Otis. Hey, you cheated. So? So a uh, nice shot. <laughs> when it's Miller Lite, less filling tastes great. You're looking sharp, you're looking good, you've come so far, and we know how to make the most of who you are, father to son, it's what we've always done, Gillette. The, the Gillette Atra Plus system with the Luber Smooth Strip for the best a man can get. The best a man can get. for the final 97 seconds of play in a tie ball game. The master, Denny Crum, instructing his ball club. It has been another big night for the University of Louisville Cardinal bench, having outscored the Bearcats 29 to four. Their bench has been averaging 23.7 points per game. They have better that by a pretty good margin tonight. You gotta give a lot of credit to Everett Sullivan, who's just had an outstanding game, a freshman from South Carolina. Shooting for the lead. And rebounded by Lobertus Robinson. A big miss. And a turnover. Louisville ball. Oh, what a disappointment that is. That's 15 of them now. And that could be a very critical turnover. Watch it again right here. Got to look it into your hands. It That's was all a, it is. It was certainly a pass that Gibbon should have been able to handle. Smith runs it down. Gibbon's all over it. And he saves it at the other side. Everett Sullivan does for Louisville. Good pressure by Cincinnati. Good man-to-man -man pressure. Kenny Payne. Going to go inside. Going to go inside. They deal inside to Ellison. He puts it in. And Louisville has the lead, 68 to 66. There's a trap. Here goes Banks. In and out, blocking foul. And that one goes against Tony Kimbrough. That's his fifth foul by our numbers. Let's see if it's accurate. That's all for Tony Kimbrough. Hey, Marty, I'm interested in this replay to see if Lewis Banks is going to get credit for two free throws here. Now, watch Kimbrough commit the foul. Banks knows he's going to be fouled. He's going to try to get a shot off. Look at this. Starts up. Are they going to give it to him? I got... I, apparently, they are. But the contact was made before he went to the act of shooting. Did you see how close that ball came to going in? Well, you know, they're not going to give him the two shots. They're going to actually give him the ball out of bounds. Excellent decision. Based on the replay, the official makes the right call without any question. Tony Yates, he doesn't agree with it, but that's the way it'll stand. We'll be back with 58 seconds to go. Louisville is in front by two. It's been a good one.
Since 1951, we've fueled more NASCAR winners than all other gasolines combined. And we put that same high performance and winning spirit in the gasolines for your car. What'd you say we take her for a spin, Murph? Rich it. Tonight's Metro Conference game has been brought to you by Miller Lite, by Unical, and by Ford. Well, it's been an all-too-frequent end to the script, so to speak, for frustrated Cincinnati Bearcat fans. They have led for the lion's share of this game tonight, but a slam a moment ago by Purvis Ellison has extended Louisville to the lead, 68-66. 58 seconds remaining, and it's Bearcat ball. Elnardo Gibbons goes up to get the inbounds pass. They want to go inside the Glover. Spencer all over him. Got a good body on him. Might be a big one. That's Lewis Banks holding it high above his head. Now to Gibbons. They need to score to tie. A three would put him up by one. Andre Tate off to Banks. Starks trying to get open. He's being checked effectively Good by defense by Rick Lewis. Sullivan. 15 seconds of the shot clock. And a bad pass by Banks. He, so he, wanted, he wanted a foul. He felt like Glover got pushed in the back. The shot clock is off. 15 seconds remaining in the game. And Gibbons finally able to draw the official's whistle with 12 seconds to go. Ellison will shoot him. You really have to wonder about this Cincinnati basketball program. They consistently are unable to get over the hump in close ball games. Marty, I really feel sorry for Tony. He's really done a great job of preparing this team tonight, and they were re really well prepared to play. And they've just come out here, and things have just not fallen well for them in the last couple of minutes. But you got to give Louisville credit. I mean, they've taken advantage of their opportunities. Timeout before we come back for the final 12. Louisville has taken a lead of two. We'll be back. It's been the world's best-selling car six years running. Maybe it's because of features, reputation, or overall value. Whatever it is, it's no big surprise if you've driven a Ford Escort lately. Winning the world over. Have you been behind the wheel? Winning the, Winning the world over. Get 4.9% financing or $500 cash bonus on 89 Escort. Pure. Genuine. Never heat pasteurized. A beer that's made unlike any other. Cold filtered to give you the rich, smooth taste of real draft beer. That's the mark of a great beer. Cold filtered Miller Genuine Draft. It's as real as it gets. That pretty much is the story. A dozen ticks remaining. And Purvis Ellison will tow the free line with a chance to basically ice this game for the University of Louisville, who leads by two. Ellison will have one and one. How's Purvis coming. done tonight? Has he shot free throws pretty well tonight? Well, he hit his first three and then missed his last two. 17-point night for Ellison. One and one coming up. And the strategy by Cincinnati is all determined by this first free throw. Picked up by L.A. Smith, almost stolen by Tate, and foul with seven seconds to go. Cincinnati so close twice in that loose ball situation. Well, Brad for Smith, what a rebound. Watch him go up after this basketball. Ellison misses. Takes it right over his shoulder, kicks it right out of the way. He knows he's losing his balance. Almost a steal right there. Well, Bradford gets it back, and you see the foul committed on him, and he is the best free-throw shooter that Louisville has. He's hit 34 out of his last 37 free-throws. He is second in the Metro Conference at 85.9%. So Smith will try to do what Ellison was unable to do. And you might have noted that Steve Jackson has come back into the UC lineup. the 
third point. The sophomore of Bradford Smith and with Louisville leading by three, that is their largest lead all night long. It has been that kind of night for Denny Crum and his Cardinals who are seven seconds away from going 17 and four. Six and one in the Metro that would keep them a half a game behind Florida State, who earlier tonight routed the South Carolina Gamecocks down in Tallahassee. And another final score out of the Southeastern Conference, Vanderbilt has destroyed Kentucky, 81 to 51. We might as well show you who our forward player of the game is right now. He has had, well, he's had a good night. He had the slam that put him in front. Not only the 17 points and the seven rebounds, but he's also had four blocked shots. Purvis Ellison with an absolutely fantastic night. Two steals to go with that. You know, every time he goes out, he seems to play a great basketball game. I wrote down some numbers today on the game he had against UNLV, which I think is one of the better teams in the country. 28 points, seven rebounds, four blocks, three steals, and two assists. I mean, what else can you ask a guy to do? The numbers of an All-American. And possibly the player of the year in college basketball. He's got my vote. And that's not in deference to some great players. Sean Elliott, Stacy King, Danny, Danny Ferry. Ferry. Yeah. And another one I'll tell you about, pal, Lionel Simmons of the South. Go ahead, Lionel. He is some player. Here we go. Four seconds. A three-pointer can tie for Cincinnati. And Dan throws it up. And that's it. Another heartbreaking loss for Tony Yates and the Cincinnati Bearcats. A 17th victory for Denny Crum and the Louisville Cardinals who come from behind late tonight before a standing room only crowd to defeat Cincinnati 69 to 66. Along with my partner Larry Conley, this is Marty Brenneman saying so long from Cincinnati where the final score once again was Louisville 69 and Cincinnati 66. Don't forget, coming up next on the Raycom Sports Entertainment Network, Saturday, doubleheader action, South Carolina at Memphis State or Cincinnati at Southern Mississippi. All the action gets underway at 2 p.m. on Saturday afternoon on Metro Conference basketball action from Raycom Sports. A great night of college basketball here in Cincinnati tonight. A three-point victory for Louisville. This reminder, this has been an exclusive presentation of Raycom Sports and Entertainment. So long, everybody.